In animation, the Microsoft logo bursts into clear concentric windows. Colorful rounded fabric squares converge, spiraling upward. Microsoft. Ability Summit. Artificial intelligence. Your organization is the future of accessible technology. Ail Salin, Microsoft. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining our breakout session today at the 2023 Ability Summit. My name is Ail Salin, and I'm a senior design program manager working on accessibility and inclusive design at Azure AI. I'm so excited to be here today moderating this breakout session on artificial intelligence. Your organization is the future of accessible tech. As you all know, AI has been all over the news these days. We hope this session will be both timely and relevant for you. The goal of today's session is to show you that any organization can get involved in this moment and leverage AI to drive improvements in accessibility and inclusion. I hope by the end of the session, you'll leave inspired and excited and realize that you can easily leverage AI in your own organizations without needing a specialist team of data scientists. We've got some great presenters today who will all bring a different perspective on this topic. Without further ado, I'll let them introduce themselves. Marco Casalena. Oh, I'm Marco Casalena. I'm Vice President of Products of Azure AI. Shakul Raj Hello. Sankar. I'm Shakul Raj. I'm one of the co-founders at iSTEM, where we work to develop technology to solve digital accessibility solutions. Anna Setterstein. Hello, my name is Anna Setterstein, and I'm head of Department uh, Languages and Accessibility at Swedish Television, SVT, in Sweden. Thanks, everyone. So today we'll start with hearing from Marco about how our Microsoft's Azure AI can be used to benefit accessibility. Then we'll hear from Shakul and Anna about the ways that they each use AI in their organizations. They come from different kinds of organizations and, and everyone has really interesting stories to share about the use of AI. So Marco, why don't you take us away? Thank you, Elsa. I work on the Azure AI team here at Microsoft. Azure AI is the collection of artificial intelligence services offered by Microsoft as part of the Azure Cloud Platform. These services make it easy for developers and organizations to add AI to their applications and services without needing deep AI expertise. My work focuses on Azure Cognitive Services, speech, language, vision, decision, and more recently, OpenAI. These are pre-built, pre-trained models built by our incredible data scientists. And now any developer or organization can add these capabilities into their app just by calling an API. You can use them out of the box or you can customize them for your specific use case. If you wanna go deeper, you can build and train your own models using Azure Machine Learning, but you could do an awful lot of innovation without having to get that technical. Now you'll notice that a lot of these cognitive services capabilities map directly to human senses or human capabilities, vision, speech, decision-making. At Microsoft, we often talk about how disability isn't caused by a personal health condition, but by a mismatch between a person and the system they're using. That's why I'm so excited about the use of cognitive services and AI for accessibility. With capabilities like speech to text or image descriptions or language translation, we can directly address these mismatches. Here are some common examples of how Azure AI is used for accessibility. These use cases can be found in our own Microsoft products, but are also used by many of our customers. We have live captions, which benefit accessibility for deaf and hard of hearing users, content reading for people with a vision disability or neurodivergence, translation for non-native speakers, voice input or dictation for mobility impaired users, and descriptions of images and videos for people with a vision disability. And speaking of inclusive design, these are all great examples of features that enhance accessibility and make our products easier to use for everybody. I know I love using captions in Teams when I'm speaking with a worldwide audience. It really helps me reduce my cognitive load. Captioning is a vital tool to create accessibility for people who are deaf or hard of hearing. Peloton is a company that sells exercise bikes and also exercise classes, which is part of their signature experience. They use Azure Speech to Text to caption their live classes, which weren't previously accessible. They're able to customize our speech model to ensure Peloton specific exercise phrases are recognized correctly. Anna will go into more detail for us later on how to implement captioning. 
Another example of where AI can have a huge impact on accessibility is in computer vision. Just yesterday, we announced the public preview of a new computer vision API that has made a huge leap forward in quality and specificity of image descriptions. We're using this new model to improve automatic image descriptions across Microsoft, including in seeing AI, and now have customers like Reddit using it in their products too. Here are some examples that I think really underline how exciting this technology is and how much improved these descriptions will be for blind and low vision users. Where the model would previously describe the image shown as a person wearing red shoes, which is true, it's now able to provide the specific details that a human would be likely to describe. For example, that the person is a child, that they're playing hopscotch. The model is able to identify the colored squares painted on the sidewalk as hopscotch, which displays a much improved level of understanding of the world. This aerial shot of a parking lot was previously described as a large collection of batteries. Now, we're able to correctly describe this image as a parking lot full of cars. And lastly, we're able to correctly describe a pipette adding liquid into a tray, which is a piece of scientific equipment that I know many people in my team wouldn't be able to name correctly. These improved descriptions will soon be making their way into all of our Microsoft products and can be leveraged by any developer with a simple API call. Another vision-based solution that can have a huge impact is Form Recognizer. This is an example of an applied AI. We've packaged our computer vision technologies to allow organizations to easily extract structured information from unstructured content, like images of documents. The information in this business card can be captured into structured form with name, phone number, email address, and company name all stored separately. Shakul will be able to talk to us about how his company is using form recognizer technology to remediate inaccessible documents. And lastly, and you may have heard a lot about this one recently, Azure OpenAI. Microsoft has partnered with OpenAI to accelerate the development and use of their models. While this is a new and constantly evolving area, it's also a very exciting one for accessibility. Technologies like GPT, Codex, and DALI are generative tools. They can help you write content, code, or generate images. They're exciting because they're essentially assistive technology for everyone. Natural language interactions like chat interfaces can make things easier and more efficient for everyone, but can have a particular impact on people with disabilities. For example, earlier in the Ability Summit, we talked about Hey GitHub. GitHub used a combination of our Azure speech to text and OpenAI's Codex to create a voice powered natural language to code editor. This eliminates the need for typing and helps people with mobility disabilities or dyslexia to code more efficiently. Dolly can help people with vision disabilities generate visual content using text. GPT 3.5 is being used for intelligent recap in Teams meetings to automatically generate notes and focus on the meeting discussion. I'm really excited about this one myself. We're also working hard to make sure that these AI models generate content that's representative of people with disabilities and are in service of this community. So that was a lot of information and a lot of different technologies. You may be asking, how do I get started? We're releasing this toolkit as part of our ongoing journey with the accessibility evolution model. We hope this can be a resource for your organization to accelerate your own progress for accessibility and inclusion in a sustainable way. It also builds on all the learnings we've taken from our work with our customers across both nonprofits and startups. We hope that this will help you build on your understanding of accessibility and create a framework for accessibility innovation. It includes practical tips, case studies, as well as specific tools like data sets, APIs, and relevant research. Our toolkit helps you work through your innovation ideas to help you ensure they truly serve the disability community with questions like identifying the opportunity for your potential product or service, what needs of people with disabilities are currently not addressed? Establishing the potential customers. Can you identify one person for whom you're solving a problem? Validating your solution or prototype. By co-creating with people with disabilities and testing with them as well, you can identify potential barriers for your users. 
That was my overview of Azure AI and all the different ways that organizations are already using us for accessibility. It's inspiring and exciting stuff. But I always find that the most interesting part is in the details. What actually happens when you start testing the technology and speaking to users for feedback? I'm looking forward to hearing from the rest of our presenters today to get into that. Yes, thanks, Marco, and, and what a good transition. Um, and thank you so much for sharing the Accessibility Innovation Toolkit. I think that seems awesome. Um, so uh, speaking of getting into the details, I'd love to hear from Shakul. Shakul, would you like to tell us more about iSTEM? Hi, Elsa, thank you so much. Um, yeah, um, so at iSTEM, our vision really is to provide everyone and anyone who needs an accessible documents and accessible content so that no one faces this book famine that we call in our community. Um, talking about our own background, iSTEM basically started uh, four and a half years ago as a self-advocacy group where we really wanted to create awareness, especially in the STEM areas for blind students in India specifically. So we started with organizing several uh, awareness creating events such as inclusive hackathon, tech training initiatives, um, internship, recruitment initiatives, so on and so forth. But we soon realized that if we want to create a bigger impact or if we want to really scale of what we are doing, we need to really use our own technical skills and develop something that can solve a bigger problem. And one of the biggest problem that we observed within the blind community is to find a solution that can resolve the problem of inaccessible content. So when I say inaccessible content, basically uh, a content is inaccessible if it cannot be accessed with the assistive technology that people who are blind or uh, vision disabilities use in their day-to-day -day life, such as screen readers. Now, uh, in 2020, we started with developing a solution using latest in AI and develop an automated document converter that can convert an inaccessible content into accessible formats. So user can simply upload their inaccessible file onto this uh, portal and they can simply um, download an accessible output. But we soon realized that you know accessible and usable documents are not sufficient. We need to also create a portal or a platform where they can also find 100% accurate documents because AI cannot be 100% ac uh, accurate all the time. And this is when we came into uh, Remediation editor. So remediation editor is nothing but it couples human intelligence with latest in AI and really uh, provide you an editor that can help you to edit a document. This is also an AI powered tool. So what uh, what it does, it basically provides you a simple plug and play model where you can remediate slash edit slash fix any changes in your document that AI might have left it for you. So uh, the process to convert a document really is for our users that uh, they can simply come on to our portal, upload a document, uh, choose an output format and get an accessible output uh, document. If they are not satisfied with the uh, automated result, they can simply escalate a document and then it is escalated to a remediator. Now the remediator job starts from here. Remediation is a two-step process. At step one, a remediator fixes all the layout and reading order issues. And at step two, they fix all the textual issues. And that's how they complete a document. And now this completed document is 100% accessible, usable, and consumable document and accurate too. So basically we build on top of Azure OCR, right? Um, especially our uh, layout detection models. Uh, so all the, uh, output that uh, remediators work in uh, during their remediation is actually fed in and create a new document that can also move this process and also becomes a faster process to solve this problem. I'm talking about our customers, iSTEM works really closely with DPOs, um, corporates, higher educational institutes, and other assistive tech uh, companies. Founded by people with disability ourselves, iSTEM has in its core that we really wanted to co-create our product. From the day one itself, we wanted to incorporate the feedback, suggestions, and recommendations from our users. 
because it not only help, helps us to develop a better product, but also helps us to understand our users and also create um, user-centric uh, offerings in future. So for example, in last year, 2022, my uh, primary goal was really to move across the country and visit different different places and meet as many uh, people with disabilities and possible and uh, take their feedback on our solution, which was a very eye-opening activity for me because uh, I could heard uh, several people and how do they think about our solution and what are the feedback that they may have. Um, talking about the driving factor for innovation at iSTEM, we basically build on two things. First is our solution is grounded in the lived experience of our own users. And second is the most important factor for us is the iterative process. So this is how our development cycle look like. We start with a prototype, go to our users, ask them questions, get their opinion, come back, decide upon what are the next features that we need to include in our offerings and go back within our community. After multiple cycles, we then launch our product for public and then again collect some more feedback and come back and see if we can improve the offerings that we have. This approach has not only helped us to drive innovation at ISTEM, but also helps helped us to understand our user better and create user-centric product that is inclusive, accessible, and usable for all. So this is how our journey looks like, and thank you so much. Thanks so much, Shakul. In particular, I loved hearing about how grounded you are in your users' needs at iSTEM and, and the co-creation process. I think we should all develop our products with that level of iteration. Um, uh, Anna, you have a very different perspective, right? Um, please tell us about implementing accessibility at the national broadcasting level. Yes, thank you. Uh, SVT is the Swedish publish, uh, public service broadcaster and we provide content for the audience uh, about 22,000 hours a year, of which 7,000 hours is uh, buyouts from um, other countries such as United States, Australia, India, France, Germany, all over the place. And 15,000 hours of Swedish uh, own produced material. Of those 5,000 hours are live and 10,000 hours are pre-produced content. And um, amidst these um, 5,000 hours of uh, live content, uh, there are mostly news and sports, but we miss out uh, one part of the news, and that is the local news, the regional channels, 21 channels all uh, across uh, Sweden. Uh, that we don't have any closed captioning of, because here in Sweden, uh, the government demands of the public service companies to provide 100% closed captioning of the pre-produced Swedish material and uh, about 80% of the live material. Uh, the local news has been an exception. Uh, and they still are in the demands, but we wanted very much to give the audience this much asked for service to uh, give um, the viewers uh, uh, closed captioning for the local news. But how to do it when there are 21, 21 parallel uh, transmissions uh, seven times a day? And in comes AI. We are using it since two years back and started testing in 2019. And we have had regular publishing since 1st of January 2021. So two years now and learned a lot. And how we did we do it? How did we choose which AI to use, which uh, speech to text provider? Uh, we did a lot of testing. Uh, we used um, uh, word error rate, WER, which is a way to uh, measure how many mistakes the AI does compared to a ground truth text. And, but we also uh, used our own uh, human intelligence to uh, look at the closed captions to, to uh, be sure that this is 
uh, on our height of readability, the demands we at SVT have to provide it to the audience. Uh, so uh, we have uh, quite a few speech to text providers to choose from, but for this particular with the, the local news, we are using Asher and uh, uh, are very pleased with the improving that uh, the AI from Azure has made over those two years, even though there still are, of course, learnings to do. So it's so much um, uh, agreeable with what the audience needs today than when we started out the testing before started regularly publishing. We have also made a, a survey after about six months. We asked the audience, and in particular, the audience with hearing disabilities. So we, we formed a, a collaboration with the, uh, the organization for uh, people with hearing impairment in Sweden, and we got lots and lots of answers because this is a topic that really engages people. Uh, and to bit of a surprise for us working in this field of uh, closed captioning and localization, we found out that what the audience most of all disagreed with was, was when um, uh, text was missing. So they want the closed captioning to follow real close to what people are saying, even though uh, sometimes people are, you know, speaking backwards or uh, uh, stuttering or making other mistakes. This particular target group, they want it to follow the speech, which is not so strange thinking about it because many of those people are having some hearing and it's much easier to follow when uh, the closed captioning is falling in speech. Uh, but we also found out uh, many more interesting uh, findings with, with this survey. And we are uh, constantly uh, having a dialogue amongst ourselves and with Asher about how to improve the AI. Uh, and the readability, as I mentioned, is our uh, not number one topic for this. Uh, the workflow is quite simple. Um, the local news, as soon as they have finished, for example, at 9.05 in the morning, they are three minutes long. The whole of the audio goes to um, uh, Azure uh, and the AI turns it into um, a transcript and then it formats as we have chosen how the subtitles will look like as closed captions and then turn back. So uh, like about one minute after the transmission is finished, the three minute transcript is in place. So it's not live live, it's it's live in the making, but not in the transmission. Uh, but um, the audience uh, don't mind because lots of people are watching their local news when it suits them. They, they don't sit there, oh, it's nine and now it finishes at nine or five. They watch it at 10 or 12, 15 or whenever. Mistakes and learnings. In the beginning, we agreed to uh, put on a filthy filter, uh, not to get those words out in the open, uh, but instead covering it up with um, stars or uh, um, fences. And it has, has worked well. And of course, the AI makes mistakes because it's a foreign language for the, uh, for the AI. Every language is foreign for it, but it has improved in its Swedish very well. And also we put in a lot of data. Uh, as you can imagine, in local news, there are lots of names of lakes and cities and forests and people. Uh, so uh, a lot of data is uh, making it um, uh, more and more uh, uh, specific from uh, the, the local regions. And local also means dialects. And in Sweden, of course, we have lots of people with different sort of ways of speaking uh, as dialects, or you have a broken Swedish, or you have a, uh, something that uh, sticks out like you're um, uh, saying instead of S, uh, and so forth. And the AI is improving even this. You can train it, which we have done together with Asher in Stockholm. We have trained it the AI of uh, 
and the southern accents, which are for the AI a bit difficult to understand. So uh, all in all, we are uh, pleased with uh, the improvements and looking forward to to uh, take on larger challenges, uh, which is um, correct interpunctation, which of course increases the readability, and also uh, the golden uh, uh, challenge, which is editing being able to edit like a person or a human can do when taking away small words, uh, switching the um, uh, way of speaking if you're not grammatically correct and it uh, endangers the readability, uh, and also speaker shift to um, uh, be able to make diarization so you understand who is saying what. There we are now after two years, and uh, we are already moving forward to the next step, which is live live. So we have made some tests here in January uh, in three weeks for uh, on a show that is a very slow uh, speaking show uh, with mostly one person at a time speaking and conference as long as three hours. Uh, and it could be any topic. It could be uh, the war in Ukraine. It could be about horses. It could be about daily politics in Sweden. It could be about hunting or whatever. So lots of data uh, needed and lots of training to uh, catch up with. But we are uh, impressed of uh, the um, ability that um, Asher has shown in, in this live captioning, uh, and now we're discussing what to do with the next step. So uh, that's where we are now. Great, thank you so much, Anna. I'm so glad to hear that Azure Speech to Text has been standing up to your testing and with all the dialects and place names and, and accents, it's a challenge for sure. Uh, very excited to hear how live broadcasts go too. I'd say one theme I'm definitely hearing across all our presenters today is the importance of working with customers or end users to gather that feedback. Like That's definitely something we heard from both iSTEM and SVT. Um, it's so important to not just use the technology, but actually understand how it's being used and, and what people with disabilities want in their accessibility needs. Um, today we heard a lot about AI and how it's not just the technology of the future, but it's a set of tools and technologies that we have available to us today with such great opportunities for impact on accessibility. Thinking about the future though, I'd love to ask each of you, uh, starting with Marco, what are you most excited about when it comes to the future of AI and accessibility? Well, I've got to say that I am super excited about the new conversational AI capability in Bing. So if you haven't seen that, you've got to try it. Uh, I think it changes how search works, and it can really make it more accessible for all. All right, thanks, Shakul. Uh, for me, really, <clears throat> the latest in form recognizer, because the kind of uh, key value pair and tables and whatnot, uh, the layout element that we are able to retrieve uh, using the form recognizer is really essential for us because it makes our job easier. So what happens? When we start the remediation editor, right, um, we automatically detect uh, all these layout editors for the remediation uh, remediator, so that they don't have to put in a lot of effort. So that is really helpful for us. Great, right. and thanks. I know you've been working hard with the form recognizer team to provide feedback and help us improve. So you know, and we exactly. heard the same from Anna we, earlier. We, we actually have been sharing a lot of data uh, for, yeah. with the form recognizer team to you know uh, further fine tune the models. Anna, how about you? I'm looking forward to see what uh, AI can do in translation because I didn't mention translation earlier and that's because we don't uh, use uh, AI for publishing, but we are of course using AI for providing the translators uh, with uh, material. It's like um, the augmented translator we are talking about. It's like a boosting for the translators and to see how it's developing in uh, in translation between uh, two languages, but also in when several languages are involved. Uh, that will be really exciting. But firsthand, we are uh, re really looking forward to to um, 
uh, be able to use uh, the AI in in live transmissions, as I as I told you about the testing for the form uh, uh, the uh, live show. Uh, I just wanted to quickly highlight is you know when we see accessibility and assistive tech in technology, we have only we only see these uh, organization working in the accessibility slash uh, assisted domain as non-profit or charity organization, which is not true all the time. Uh, we are seeing with the help of such technology that Azure is doing a lot of startups coming up um, in this field and doing some great work. So yeah, you can uh, create and generate impact, but also uh, make some money out there. I think one thing we've definitely talked about today and, and, and are all very aware of is how AI is transforming industries as we know it at the moment. It's all over the news. Um, lots of things are going to change, and for sure, the accessibility industry will be transformed too. So, I'd love to hear from each of you on what you think uh, the the future of the accessibility industry will be. What kind of different organizations might emerge, and and yeah, what 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 are your predictions for for the future there, Marco? How about you? Well, I would suggest that the future of the accessibility industry is actually the future of the software industry. These AI capabilities give you the ability to access people no matter where they are, no matter what their abilities are, no matter what language they speak. Uh, and it's changing the world. I couldn't agree more with Marco, exactly. I mean, latest in AI actually not only resolve accessibility problem, but when you try to make or think about accessibility, you actually tend to uh, think wider and solve bigger problems, right? So, uh, with the use of AI, you can actually not only solve this problem, but also make your solution accessible without even uh, putting a lot of engineering efforts, which is great. So uh, earlier, people used to think that you, they need to make a lot of investment in terms of making their offering slash products accessible, usable, and inclusive for all, but that's not the question anymore or scenario anymore. So yeah, you can invest least and get the most uh, of the output um, using the latest in AI. So I'm really excited to see that. I have really high hopes that the tech will help out to make people more equal among each other. Even though you have a, a disability or abilities or any ability at all, you uh, should be able to feel more equal when you're in a dialogue with each other. And I think if uh, the tech industry and uh, the accessibility organizations uh, and others are uh, cooperating, we will uh, be able to find ways to, to communicate with each other uh, without those hinders of uh, disabilities and uh, abilities to, to stand in our way. So that's a hope. I, I'm not sure we're going in that direction, but something to hope for. Thank you so much for sharing, all of you. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Shakul. Thank you, Anna. A lot of wise words and, and some really inspiring thoughts for the future. Um, if you've been as inspired as I have by what we shared today and you'd like to learn more, I have two things to share with you. QR codes. So the first is you can learn more about Azure AI and how it is used for accessibility at aka.ms slash Azure AI a11y. Uh, that's where you can find out all about the different cognitive services we've talked about today and, and get hands on. Um, you can also check out the innovation toolkit and our framework for accessibility innovation at aka.ms slash innovation toolkit. We'll also share these links in the chat and our presentation will be available online at the Ability Summit website. So you can access the links there. Thank you so much again to everyone. Thanks for attending our breakout session and kind of sharing our thoughts, uh, listening to our thoughts about AI and, and the future. And please enjoy the rest of the summit. Panelists smile. Microsoft. Thank you for participating. There's more to experience. Explore other content experiences in the top navigation bar. In animation, an L-shaped curve of rounded fabric squares undulates softly.